Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. This time we'll look into data sets and how you can use them in Postman. So what do I mean by that? Well, usually you have something like one request and you have some data which you send with that request. But you can have different data sets. For example, you want to test different values for your request. And it would be a bit unpractical to make like duplicates of this request or to manually change everything. So what Postman allows you to do is to define an external data file where you define multiple data sets, so multiple values which you can run against your request. And this is exactly what we'll do in this tutorial. We'll define an external file, put there different values and run them through our collection. Take this collection for example. I have created here a very simple workflow on different steps that need to happen. And you will find this collection attached to this video so you can download it and play with it on your own computer. Now the backend servers are just for testing purposes so there are no changes there. But let me explain you briefly what's happening here. Now the first request generate reference will call an endpoint and give back a reference. Now this will be saved as a global variable and used later in the main request in which we are interested in and this is create order. So what this request is supposed to do is to create an order. It will get some dynamic data from a previous request. So this request need to run in a specific sequence and additionally it would send information like a customer ID and a product ID. And then the third request will simply check a status. So Everything is pretty simple. Now, going back to this request in the middle, as you can see here, we have some hard coded data. And we already have some tests written for that. And they're all checking that the customer ID is 200 and the product ID is 300 in this case. But what happens if we want to test against different information, different customers, different products to see how this behaves? And exactly this is the case now when we are going to define this information in external file and then use the collection runner to inject this information into Postman. So let's first go ahead and define this external file that I was talking about. I'm using right now Visual Studio Code, which is totally free to download. And the feature that I'm looking here into is that I create a valid file. Now you can define this data set in JSON or you can use CSV. Now I've decided to use JSON for this example and generally JSON is a bit more powerful than CSV. So for that reason, let's now stick to JSON and give it a try. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code because when writing JSON it is important that you write valid JSON. Otherwise, if your JSON contains any mistakes, then Postman will not be able to understand it and the whole scenario will not work. Now the way you define multiple iteration is that is by putting everything in an array. So this is the array that I'm defining and it will contain all my iterations. And inside that array, there will be objects containing values. Now what I can do initially is to just create two empty objects. So let's save this file and go back to Postman. Now in Postman, what I will do is to start a collection runner. And here I will select my collection. I don't have any environment. And I will be selecting the file that I have just created. It will recognize that this is a JSON file and will offer this preview button. Now what we will see here is that we have two iterations, but we don't have any additional data. And that is fine for the moment. I'm gonna hit here the run button. And you will see now that a collection has been executed two times. So the first iteration is here and just below it is the second iteration. Now all the tests are green and everything is working just fine. And this means that I have now defined two iterations in my case. Let's go ahead and make this a bit more sophisticated. So going back to the JSON file, let's try and edit some information here. So what I'll do in this case is I will define customer ID with a value. And let's say that this value is now 9000. And let's now define a product ID as well. I'm going to duplicate this. And let's create a new iteration as well. So now we have three iterations. 
So let's play a bit with this data so that it's a bit different. Now the information doesn't really matter. But now what we have is that we have these three different iterations, customer ID, product ID, and these are all different data that we will insert now in the body of the request. So let's save it and go back to Postman. So now if we edit the body of the create order request and replace customer ID with double curly brackets, and as we have named the value customer ID in the JSON file, this is the way we're gonna call it here as well. And the same goes for product ID. I'm gonna save it and let's open the collection runner again. I'm gonna select a collection, select the data file again. And now if I click the preview button, you'll be able to see that I have multiple iterations, in this case, three iterations. And now customer ID and product ID have different value for each iteration. So let's see how this plays out. Let's run the collection. You can see that now we have one, two, three iterations, but we also have some failed tests as well, but we'll take care of that later. Let's first make sure that what we have done actually worked. And the way we do this is, in this case, for the first iteration in create order, we click the name of the request, and then we can inspect the request body. And you will see now in the request body, we have customer ID 9000, product ID 5. So it means that the information that we have defined in the JSON file, in an external JSON file, has been now injected in our request. We are sure that the information that we have defined in a JSON file is actually being picked up by Postman and used in the request. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you feel you have learned something new, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and otherwise if you have any comments, just leave them in a the section below. I try to answer all your comments and to point you in the right direction, so feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions. See you next time, bye bye.